Hi, Little Makers, it's Miss Patty from the Cybrarium, and what do I have behind me? Bugs, bugs, bugs. And how can we look at them even closer to get a good, good sense of all their different parts and beautiful colors? It is with a magnifying glass. Yes, we could take a magnifying glass to our backyard. We can find a bug and really get to know the different parts and colors and details that each have. The book that we're gonna be reading today is called The Bug Girl. And The Bug Girl is a true story about a two-year-old that already knew that she loved bugs. And how she, as she was growing up, she found that there were some people that liked bugs and others that didn't like them so much. So it's her story and I would love to share it with you. I hope you like it and learn a little bit more about her. The Bug Girl, A True Story by the Bug Girl herself, Sophia Spencer, with Margaret McNamara, illustrated by Karaskowet. Published by Schwartz Wade Books. Thank you, Schwartz Wade Books, for allowing us to share this book together. The first time I made friends with a bug, I was two and a half years old. My mom took me to a butterfly conservatory, which is like a zoo for butterflies. As soon as we got there, a butterfly perched on my shoulder. It flitted onto my hand and my foot, my elbow and my head, even my nose. It stayed with me the whole time we were there. There she is with the butterfly on her nose. And the little boy goes ahead and says, she's a butterfly magnet. When it was time to go home, a guard stopped us at the door. I'm sorry, miss, the butterfly has to stay here, he told me. Say goodbye to the butterfly, said my mom, but it did not move. Carefully, gently, the guard took the butterfly from my shoulder, and after a moment, away it flew. Bye-bye, butterfly, I said. From that day on, I was bug crazy. Other kids liked storybooks, I liked bug books. Other kids watched cat videos. I watched bug videos over and over and over. I noticed bugs everywhere I went. <laughs> By the time I turned five, I knew a lot about bugs. There are billions of bugs on our planet. Bugs have been on Earth way longer than humans have. They live on every continent, even Antarctica. One way or another, most plants and animals rely on bugs to survive. The scientific name for bugs is arthropods, but I call them bugs for short. In kindergarten, nobody minded that I loved bugs. She went ahead and said to everybody in her class, prehistoric dragonflies were as big as seagulls. Wow, that's pretty big, said the little boy behind her and cool, the little girl that was drawing here and awesome. They were really excited about the fact she was talking about. When the other kids in my class started a karaoke club, I started a bug hunter club. Every weekend, my friends and I took our bug buckets and nets and magnifying glasses out to the stream near my house. We collected fireflies and watched them glow. We identified beetles by their two sets of hidden wings, and we counted the spots on ladybugs. We watched dragonflies hover like helicopters. We even collected stink bugs, which really can stink. I took the bugs home to study them. Mostly, I had to keep them out on the porch so they wouldn't escape and crawl around the house. It's just mom and me at home, so we share chores. Mom has a lot of rules. Make your bed, pick up your clothes, keep your room neat. No ants in the house unless they're in an ant farm. I just have one rule, all bugs must live. If there's a mosquito buzzing, I snatch it up in a napkin and I let it go. We don't have a fly swatter, we have a fly net. One night my mom saw a water bug, a giant flying roach. In the middle of the living room, she knew the bug rule was important to me, so she didn't kill it. She put, it in a, she put a net over it and waited for me to find it in the morning. But when I lifted the net, it was gone. 
Where did it go? When I got to first grade, everything changed. Nobody wanted to hear about bugs. Nobody thought bugs facts were cool. At first, I didn't mind. I would raise my hand. Like she shows right here, right? Bug scientists are called etymologists. Show off, he would say. Why are you wearing that anyway? And it was a shirt, right, with her bug on it. She loved bugs, so why not show it? Then I brought a grasshopper to school. I thought the kids would be so amazed by the grasshopper that they'd want to know all about it, but they didn't. A bunch of kids crowded around me and made fun of me. Sophia's being weird again, one of them said. Ew, gross, said another. Get rid of it. Then they knocked that beautiful grasshopper off my shoulder and stomped on it till it was dead. That night I went home and cried and cried. Those kids are wrong, my mom said. It's okay to love bugs, Sophia. I know, I said. It just doesn't feel like it. I had to go back to school, but I didn't bring a bug with me ever again. That didn't stop the kids from making fun of me. Why doesn't she like things like regular things? I don't want to be friends with a bug lover, says the bubble thought. She's so strange. But I think that if they took the time to get to know her and know all the things that she loves about bugs, they may start to like it too. And then she can learn about the things that they like. They could become friends. About halfway through first grade, I took a break from bugs. My mom did not like seeing me so unhappy, not one bit. She knew I needed to find other people who loved bugs as much as I did. She wrote an email to a group of etymologists asking for one of them to be my bug pal. She wanted me to hear from an expert that it was not weird or strange to love bugs and insects. Maybe somebody will write back, said my mom. Maybe, I said, or at least call. We thought those scientists would be just too busy to respond. But three days later, my mom got an email. She opened it. It's from a bug scientist named Morgan Jackson, she said. He wants to put my letter online so that other etymologists can read about you, okay? Okay, I said. Morgan Jackson posted my mom's letter and he asked other bug scientists all around the world to let me know if they had any advice for a girl who loves bugs. So scientists from around the world went ahead and wrote her letters and they went ahead and talked how wonderful it was to be a bug lover and why it's perfect that she's the way she is. When one of them said, I'm glad my parents were open to my interest and supported me in my love of etymology. And this one over here says, I like insects because they fill me with childlike wonder. Hashtags, bugs are for girls. Hashtag insects, how cute. Two days after that messages as I showed you and posts and videos poured in. I couldn't believe how many people around the world loved bugs as much as I did and how many of them were grown-up women. Some were scientists who wrote about the work they do in their labs. Others shared videos of themselves with bugs on their arms and sent pictures of themselves hunting bugs in the wild. I looked at those messages day after day. All these people love bugs, I said to my mom. They do, she said. They're not weird. Nope, said mom. They're curious, just like you. Newspaper reporters read my story online and they started calling my mom to find out more. The reporters asked to interview me and I talked to them on the phone. My mom and I even appeared on television, which was a bit crazy and scary. It's hard to be on television when you are just an ordinary person, but I did it. I wanted to get the word out that it's okay to love bugs. Repeat this book, this page, Newspaper reporters read my story online and they started calling my mom to find out more. The reporters asked to interview me and I talked to them on the phone. My mom and, e and I even appeared on television, which was a bit scary. It's hard to be on television when you're just an ordinary person, but I did it. I wanted to get the word out that it's okay 
to love bugs. Then Morgan Jackson decided to write a scientific article about how etymologists can get young people excited about science. Morgan asked if I would like to help write the article and I said yes. School got a lot easier after that because I didn't feel so alone and nowadays I like even more things. Gymnastics, time travel books, swimming and technology. But not too long ago, when somebody asked me to describe myself in three words, I said, the bug girl, that's because I'm happiest when it's just me. A few green leaves, some drops of water, and a bug to keep me company. So over here, I love this picture. She's a little bit more grown up here. And she has the butterfly. Still loving it, still loving being outdoors, right? So over here at the end of this book, it's more bug facts. A lot of facts about different bugs, but I like this one. My top four bugs and why. The grasshopper, number one. The blue morpho butterfly, number two. The praying mantis, number three. And number four, the fly. And a little bit about ants she put here. She likes them too. So you could check out this book come to the library and you can find out why those are the bug girl's favorite bugs. I bet you have a couple of favorite bugs too. Here are some other books you may love after reading this book. This one is called, You Can Be an Etymologist. This is another book that you may like that you could check out from the Cybrarium titled Bugs in Danger Are Vanishing Bees, Butterflies, and Beetles. How about this one? Wow, look what bugs can do. This one seems really interesting. Insects and spiders explore nature with fun facts and activities. Maybe you'll find something that you'll like to do here. You could check out this book at the Cybrarium.